Okay, so this video is going to continue that PowerPoint. Um, first one, we were talking about in-text citations. This one, we're talking about your references list. APA calls your list of citations at the end of a paper a reference list. Bibliography, works cited is kind of interchangeable names for that. Those are other styles. They mean the same thing. It's the list of works or references or sources that you cited for information within your research paper. And so some basic rules that um, apply to all APA citations for this, starting with authors once again. So for single authors, if it's one person that wrote the book or the article or whatever it is you're looking at, pretty simple. Um, it is last name, comma, first initials. So you're always listing the last name first. And once again, APA always uses first and possibly middle initials if they have their middle initial on the printed publication that you're looking at. So this burnt comma T period J. So make sure you are putting that comma in between there. That does signify that burnt is the last name. <clears throat> Students sometimes get confused about this because sometimes when you're looking at articles or book, they, books, they list them as last name, first names. Lots of times they list them as you would list your, write your own name of first name, last name. Need you to use a little bit of common sense occasionally of what is the last name. I've had a lot of students for for some reason for names that could double as a first name, last name, like Morgan or something like that. They get confused a little bit. So use some common sense. Look at it. If you're ever seeing the name followed by a comma, that's the last name. <laughs> so if it's followed by a comma, it's going to be last name, comma, first name. If it's just Morgan Anderson, then that would be Morgan would be the first name in that if it doesn't have that comma. Two authors uh, list by their last names and initials and use the ampersand instead of and to combine them. So you're listing this Wegner, DT, and Petty, RE. So you're getting both of these names. You use the ampersand in the citation itself, not the not written out word A and D, so ampersand only. Um, and you're doing them last name, comma, first initials. Not um, This is different from MLA where you would do that for the first name, but the next name would be Ari Petty for MLA. APA, no matter how many authors there are, it's always last name, comma, first initials. So three to 20 authors. This is a, something that has changed. So APA came out with a new edition last October. They updated some of the rules, and this was one of the rules that they changed. It used to be three to seven authors. They have extended that out to 20 authors. So if you have... 19 authors for an article, you have to list all 19 names. If there are more than 20, you then get to start abbreviating that list a little bit. Um, but up to 20, you have to list them out. I very, very highly doubt that you will ever have an, an article that you're looking at with more than 20 authors, but they do exist. So three to 20 authors list by last names and first initials, comma, separate authors' names. Um, while the, you then put the ampersand before the last name. So this is how you list something in any sort of speech. That's you're saying, I have three pieces of fruit. I have a fruit, apple, an orange, and a banana. You put the and before that last item. You also put commas in between all the names. So Kernis, M-H, comma, Cornell, comma, D-P, comma, Sun, R-C. And then so this ampersand before the last name. So it's how you list things that you have learned since elementary school is how you make this list. So last names, comma, first initials, ampersand before the last name, comma in between each set of names, complete names. More than 20 authors. This is where you get to start shortening this and you do it with ellipses. Ellipses is that dot, dot, dot that's telling you there's more info or something like that or we're kind of trailing off. Um, so you're using last names and initials, comma, separate the author's name. After the sixth author's names, you then use an ellipsis in place of the author's name and you skip to the very last person. So if you are author seven through 19, your name doesn't go in the citation. Like I said, very unlikely you're gonna see more than 20 authors for something. So questions about authors, let me know later, shoot me an email, um, but that is a good rule of thumb on how you do that for your work cited. So actually organizing your bibliographies. Reference list, works cited bibliographies are always organized alphabetically by the author's last name. We say author's last name because that's typically what comes first in the citation. If you don't have an author or a specific author person, whatever is coming first in your citation, so if you're looking at a website, lots of times the title of the website comes first. 
or the web page, sorry, that you're looking at, whatever comes first in the citation, that's what you organize by. <coughs> Excuse me. So alphabetically, sometimes when I'm creating this, um, I organize as I go. And so I organize as I'm typing them up. Other times I type up all of my citations and then you alphabetize them by copying and pasting or dragging and dropping as I'm done at the end of the day, but they do need to be alphabetical. This is very, very, very important. Um, this is how you find things. So if you're looking at a research paper that has 80 citations at the end of it, you want to be able to be able to scan through quickly to find the one you're looking for. That's why things are organized alphabetically because you're like, I saw this quote on page two that says Smith WL is the author. Well, you don't want to have to look through an unorganized list. You want to be able to scan right down to the S's and look for that. So organizing your alpha, your bibliographies, works cited reference list alphabetically is very important. How do you do this if you have multiple articles by the same author? Um, so you then list them in chronological order. So we're organizing when you're looking at citations by what comes first, which is typically the author's name. So if you were writing a paper on Harry Potter, you would then organize those multiple Harry Potter books by date. So you then organize, well, what comes next in the citation? And for APA, that's always going to be date. So you go by author and then you put in chronological order by date. So earliest comes first. So the oldest one comes first, then goes up to goes down the list to the most recent. Another thing that's uh, very common for APA, and this is every citation style, is what's called a hanging indent. A hanging indent means that if the citation is longer than one line, that you're typing it out and it goes onto a second line, you want to indent that second line, not the first line, the second line over um, half, one half inch. Typically you tab over once. So you use a tab button and it pops it over five spaces or one half inch. And so it is indented. This is the opposite of what you do when you begin a paragraph. So if you're writing a research paper, you indent the first line over once. This is the opposite of that. You do the second and any following line. So second, third, fourth, fifth line will be tabbed over once. So that way that makes that first line stand out. Um, it does this because it helps you look for the author's name. So because these are organized by author, you want to be able to scan through to find the author you're looking for. This hanging indent makes that author name stand out from the rest of the text, and it's really important. So you can see with this example here, if you have all of these different names, all of the second lines here following that are tabbed over, so second and subsequent line. So it's making the names stand out, so it makes it easier for your eye to scan down the page to see what you're looking for. Hanging indents are very, very important. I think the only citation style that doesn't use that is blue book citation style. So if you're going into law school, you might have a citation style that doesn't use a hanging indent. Everyone else, APA, MLA, Chicago, Turabian, um, any of the science majors that have their own very specific ones, like for biology and chemistry and stuff like that, all use hanging indents. Hanging indents are important and you will need them for every single citation. So make sure you are adding those in. How do you format titles within reference works? Um, books are always italicized. So the title of the book, the title and the subtitle completely is all going to be completely italicized. In the text, um, so we're looking at what to italicize and capitalization. This is where APA has unique capitalization rules. It's a fiddly thing. Some of it's going to go against what you have been taught on how to capitalize things in your everyday life, but it is a rule specific to APA and something most of you do need to learn and it is important. So in text, you are going to capitalize all the words except for prepositions like the, and, a, with, or, those words like you have learned all throughout school of how you capitalize things is going to be italicized. <clears throat> in the citation for the reference, you capitalize only the first word of the title and the first word of the subtitle if it has it, and then any proper nouns. Um, and I made a mistake here. <laughs> okay, so with this one, this is capitalized because it's the first word of the title. I should have had how capitalized. Um, so how would also be capitalized. Everything else is lowercase. Proper nouns are the exception to this. So proper nouns are specific person, places, and things. So my name is Laura, that's a proper noun. UNC Pembroke is a proper noun, so that would be capitalized, but any of the words surrounding it would not. 
book chapters. Um, in text, you're going to place the book chapter in a quotation mark. So this monastic and cathedral libraries is titled the book chapter, put in quotation marks. In the references, you do not place the chapter in quotation marks. This is different from MLA. So if you learned MLA for your English class or some other class, unlearn this rule. References do not have quotation marks unless they're part of the title. So if you're seeing um, quotation marks in a newspaper title that it's like quoting someone as the title of the article, and so it's actually in the print version of the thing, if it's there, you put them in the article title in the reference or the book chapter title, but most of the time you're not going to uh, do that. You do not add them in if they're not part of the printed title. So in, in text, so where you're writing it, typing out, um, according to this chapter, monastic and theater, libraries, blah, 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 you would put the quotation marks around it. For the citation, you do not. All right, journal titles. Um, journal titles are like book titles and that they are always italicized, both in text and with the reference. Italicize your journal titles. Capitalize, this is the exception to the capitalization rule where everything else for references is saying capitalize only the first word of the title, subtitle, and proper nouns. Journal titles, for unknown reasons, I don't understand why, but this is how it is, and this is the rules we're going to follow. You capitalize all the words that you would normally accept for prepositions. So you're saying journal, librarianship, information science are all capitalized, and and of prepositions, connector words, or not. So journals are the capitalization exception. Articles. Article titles are never italicized. Never, ever. Journal title, yes. Article title, no. All right, in text is just like book chapters. In text, where you're writing your actual research paper, you put quotation marks around the titles and you capitalize it as it is printed normally. In the actual citation, no quotation marks unless it's in the printed title and you do not put it in quote italic. So, Jarman, C, 2016, The Black Speech, Lord of the Rings is Modern Linguistic Critique. So, you're seeing the um, as the first word of the title is capitalized, black speech is not a proper noun. Subtitle, so you're getting this colon here, that dot dot, um, showing you that this is a subtitle. So then the and Lord and Rings are capitalized because that is the official name of a book. And so it's a proper noun. So those are capitalized, but as a modern linguistic critique are lowercase because they are not proper nouns and they're not the first word of the subtitle. Myth lore is then italicized because that is the journal title. And so then you get the rest of the info. Okay, another thing that's always italicized, um, going with journal titles. So journal titles, myth lore is going to be italicized. You also italicized the volume number, but not the issue number. That is something also unique to APA. So italicize the journal title, the volume number, but not this parentheses issue number, not the page numbers. So do remember that italics uh, go for journal title and volume title number. Websites, all right, full website name. So typically remember the website is the thing coming for the .com or .org, typically the company name up in the top left corner or at the top of the page. Full website names are always italicized, both in text and in your citation. Um, in text, you're gonna capitalize all words except for prepositions, references, just like books and everything else, capitalize only the first word and proper na names. Web pages um, kind of works more like an article or a book chapter. So in text, place the web pages and quotation marks and capitalize words, but the actual reference or citation, do not add quotation marks unless it's already part of the official title and you only capitalize the first word and proper name. So this what is cyberbullying, everything's lowercase except for the what. Another thing, if you're getting punctuation in the actual website or web page title, use that punctuation. So you're getting a quotation mark, uh, exclamation point, make sure you're adding that in. If you are confused about when to italicize, um, I like to use this example of Russian dolls. So, you know, the little dolls that fit inside each other. If it is the big mama doll, it is the main standalone work, big mom doll that contains all the other pieces. That is what you italicize. The mom doll is always italicized. Your journal articles, your newspaper articles, your book chapters that fit into the mom doll, so that fit into this larger work, then an article comes out of a journal, a book chapter comes out of a book, a web page comes off a website. Those you do not. So little bitty children dolls, smaller pieces do not get italicized. 